hey guys hey and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel so today i'm finally posting my first ever conspiracy theory video which i'm like so excited today i'm gonna talk about a, one of my favorite conspiracy theories ever which is the hollow earth theory quick disclaimer uh this video is only for entertainment purposes this theory is not have been proved and a lot of things that i'm gonna include in this video are not facts these are just theories so yeah i know that youtube uh, mostly don't like conspiracy theory videos so this is just for fun <laughs> So let's get right into the video. So the idea that the earth is hollow does not get a lot of respect and probably for the most of the people this theory is as much crazy as the flat earth theory, which I guess it is, but it's fun to think about, like just imagine a world within our world just waiting to be explored. However, we all know what modern science teaches that Earth is a series of unbroken layers. But what if the truth is so different and maybe all of the things that we have been studying in school, what if all of that is not real? Part of the Hollow Earth story is that many ancient civilizations have pretty similar creation stories that involve this Hollow Earth theory. First of all, the idea is based on the ancient legends of many cultures that claim that there are races of people, like entire civilizations, living in the subterranean cities underneath us for thousands and millions of years. To begin with, the Buddhists have always confirmed their existence and it is actually believed that till this day in Tibet, monks are protecting entrances to the subterranean cities in the Himalaya mountains. They believe that the subterranean world has millions of inhabitants and many cities its capital being called Shambhala, but this subterranean land also appeared as the Greek underworld, the Christian hell, the Jewish shell, uh, I hope that I'm pronouncing it right. In Hindu and in Celtic lore, there are stories about caves and underground entrances to these subterranean worlds and there is also Mayan underworld. So I have always been really fascinated about Mayans and the, like their existence, the way they live and the things they believe and also their mystical disappearance. Um, I really like their mythology. So yeah, I'm like a fan of them. So a little bit more about the Mayans. So the Mayans had seen it, an underwater cavern that was central to the Mayan spirituality. Basically seen it was a hole in the ground and this hole was filled with water and this water was the main fresh water resource for the Mayans and they truly believed that this hole was the entrance to the underworld and they believed in three basic layers the heavens, the earth, and the underworld. And the underworld was the most important to them. It was considered to be the origin of life and they called this underworld place Xibalba, translated as the place of the fear. It was ruled by Mayan dead gods and their helpers. In Mayan mythology, Xibalba was a large place. It seemed to be full with traps, so it would be hard for people to get inside there. For example, a river filled with scorpions and a river filled with blood. Also noteworthy is the Mayan calendar and how it looked like. 
Basically, it was a circular calendar and inside in this calendar was four boxes and these four boxes represented the four worlds of the past and the central circle is our world. Each of those four previous worlds was destroyed by wind, by fire, by ice, by water. The Great Flood. So, is this story just a mythology or is there something more behind all of this? Without mythological assumptions about this theory, there also were many mathematicians and scientists who believed in Hollow Earth story. For example, a famous mathematician, Edmund Halley, most known for Halley's Comet. In 1692, he came out with the idea of Earth having a hollow shell, two inner concentric shells and an innermost core about the diameters of the planets Venus, Mars and Mercury. 75 years later, 18th century mathematician Leonard Euler came out with his own hollow earth theory. He believed that inside, in our earth, there was another sun for, for that world, for those people, beings who live there. He also had a theory that both poles, the South Pole and the North Pole, both had entrances to this inner world. After then, there was of course many more people who talked about this theory, who speculated if it's true, if it's not. But this theory was really revisited by Admiral Richard Byrd. Richard Byrd was US naval officer. He fought in both world wars and he also was US explorer. At 1926, he and his pilot Floyd Bennett took off from Norwegian Arctic Island to be first ones ever to fly over the North Pole. 16 hours later, they came back and they said that they did it, they accomplished the task. Bird gave his navigation records to the US Navy and to National Geographic Society, one of his sponsors, and they confirmed that he did it, that he and Floyd Bennett were the first ones ever to fly over the North Pole. And for that, Bird received a Medal of Honor, the highest honor given by United States. According to his diary, a couple of years later, in 1947, Bird and his team went on expedition to Antarctica and this expedition changed his life forever. When they got there, one of the first things that they saw was this weird cave inside in the mountain and they decided to fly in in this cave. The thing that they didn't know was that the scale was actually entrance to this underground subterranean land. When they got inside in this cave, Bird suddenly saw this weird looking flying object and it was moving towards Bird's plane. Then suddenly this flying object takes control of Bird's plane and they are being escorted down in this hill like further and further inside in the underground and then these weird looking beings took him to meet their leader. He told Bird that he had been allowed to enter Agartha because of his high moral and ethical character. In this journey he traveled 2,735 kilometers over mountains, lakes, rivers, green vegetation and animal life with mammoth-like creatures. The only thing that I could not find is what happened to his teammates because he didn't went to this Agartha city alone. He had team with him but his team has not been mentioned anywhere after this journey and he also didn't mention them in his diary so I don't know like 
what did they say and did they also say that this journey was true and that they really were in this Agartha city um yeah when Bird got back to the United States, he was brought to Washington and there US military like questioned him really heavily and at the end they told him that he can't talk about this to anyone and in his diary he wrote I have just attended a staff meeting at the Pentagon. I have stated fully my discovery and the message from the master. All is duly recorded. The president has been advised. I'm now detained for several hours, 6 hours, 39 minutes to be exact. I am interviewed intently by top security forces and the medical team. It was an ordeal. I'm placed under strict control via the national security provisions of United States of America. I'm ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on the behalf of humanity. Incredible. I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. In 1954, Bird was interviewed on live TV and the statements that he gave were and still are really mystical. Admiral Bird, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So job. there's a lot of adventure left mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the world. In 1957, Bird died at age 69. And many years later, his son then published his diary. Admiral Byrd's story was one of the strangest ever been told before. He was not a narrator or a writer. Would Byrd's son publish a false information about his father? Would Byrd himself lie about his discoveries? The idea that a well-respected man with a moral stature and a failure would fabricate stories like that is just unbelievable. Bird's story was one of the strangest ever been told and I think his story is one of the biggest proof that there could be a hollow earth. And I think that the story about Bird's sons, the, the ones who published his diary, is also worth mentioning. So in 1988 he was found dead at age 68 at the abounded warehouse. He was wearing green worksman's clothes and only one boot. He apparently died from malnutrition and dehydration. On the September 13, he left Boston to go to ceremony to Washington to honor his father, but he never arrived. The only person so far who remembers seeing him since he left Boston was the train worker who saw him together with an unidentified man. No one knows what happened to him, but police ruled this as a suicide, which is just ridiculous. First of all, he was going to a ceremony to honor his father. Why would he do a suicide then? Why would he make a suicide dressed like a workman in a bounded warehouse and the cause of his death was dehydration. Most of the people don't believe that it was a suicide and his family also does not believe that it was a suicide. In 2014, scientists drilled 13 kilometers inside in the earth, but they stopped because it got too hot. So, out of 6,000, 
500 kilometers to the core of the Earth, they drilled only 13 kilometers. The thing what they did find showed how little do we know about our own Earth. Basically, I read that there was presence of water where it shouldn't even have been and they didn't know that. We have more than 70 active space programs. We can tell more about surface of the moon than about Earth. We don't really know what's down there. If you want to know my opinion about this story, I... Part of me really believes that it could be possible that there could be a hollow earth inside in our earth. Hmm? Why not? I think the government lies us about so many things that it wouldn't even be a surprise. So yeah, I guess that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed my first conspiracy theory video. If you want to, you can subscribe to my channel and if you like this video, press a like button or if you didn't like it, you also know what to do. Bye!